Welcome to our collective worship today. We might not be in the hall, but we're all still coming together as a school community because every class in our school is watching this same video of collective worship today. Like we say, our morning prayers and our lunchtime prayer in every class in the school. Each week, a different teacher will record the videos for our collective worship. So you're going to meet loads of people from Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. Perhaps you'll see some familiar faces that you haven't seen for a while and maybe you'll meet some new people. So our whole school community is coming together to meet with God and to learn more about him. I'm Mrs Richardson, you can find me in year two. Some things you might not know about me. I love being outside, which is why I'm in my garden as I record this. And I also enjoy camping, walking and running. From next week, we would love you to take the lead in your classes too. Your teacher will be choosing children to welcome your class to worship by saying a greeting of your choice. Perhaps you'll choose God is good all the time, or maybe this is the day that the Lord has made. We would like children in each class to lead the prayers and the blessing at the end too. If you find any other ways to join in, that would be fantastic. Please ask your teacher to video you so that we can share your ideas with different classes and with our wider school community by the Collective Worship blog. We will signal the start of our worship time together today by lighting a candle. The candle symbolises God with us through his Holy Spirit. On our worship table we also have a Bible to represent God the Father and a cross that represents Jesus the Son of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice, rejoice and, and be glad, glad in it. We're going to start today with a bit of a game. I'm going to show you six different pictures one at a time. And I'd like you in your classes to talk about how they relate to building. I'll leave a bit of a pause between each one to give you a chance to answer that question. Here's the first one. Yeah, that one is a marble run, where you build different pieces together to create different tracks for marbles to go down. Here's the next one. Well done if you recognise that as a Jenga tower. Perhaps you've had fun with family or friends, building it up and then trying not to let it fall down on your turn. And number three. that one was a domino rally we have to take a lot of care to place the dominoes really really carefully so that they don't fall over before you're ready and number four that one is a bit different I'm sure you recognized it as Scrabble where you don't build a building but you're actually building words and number five sure you all recognise that one as Duplo or Lego and I'm confident that you've all spent time playing with that sometime in your life. Perhaps it's something you still enjoy doing now. And the last one. The last one is a jigsaw puzzle and that's something that we're going to think a lot more about for the rest of our assembly today. Many people enjoy completing the jigsaw puzzles. And there are loads of different approaches that you can take when you first get the puzzle out of the box. Maybe you could share with your class now how you would choose to do a jigsaw puzzle. Pause the video if you want to talk about this in your class. Yeah, some of the different approaches might be that you do the edge first, sort the edge pieces, do the edge before I start in the middle. Maybe you leave the edge till last. Perhaps you look for obvious parts of the picture and put those together first. Or maybe you sort the pieces by colour. It's true that different jigsaw puzzles often need different approaches and that's fine. But whatever you do, there's usually a lot of muddle before the jigsaw gets sorted out and completed. Our school community is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle that we've been building in different sections. 
Back in March, most of you were learning from home with only a few children in school each day. Then a bit later on, adults and children started to come back a few at a time, with many people still learning at home. And those that were back were a bit like bits of the jigsaw being put back together. Now it's September and nearly everybody is back at school. Our jigsaw is coming back together, but things still look a bit different. It's not normal for your assembly to come from a screen in your classroom, for example. That's something that's still a bit different. For the next few weeks, we're going to explore a story that you can find in the Bible in the books of Nehemiah and Ezra in the Old Testament. Let's give it the title, Nehemiah and the Big Rebuild. Each time today that you hear the word build or rebuild, I want you to join in by building with your fists. Give it a practice. Nehemiah wanted to build. Well done if you did it. And remember to do the same action for rebuild as well. Nehemiah was not a builder. He was cupbearer to the king of Babylon. It was a very important job in the royal household. Most of God's people were once again far, far away from home living in exile in Babylon. They had never forgotten about Israel, the land they called home, but had begun to build new lives for themselves in Babylon, not ever imagining that they would return to Israel. One day, Nehemiah had a visitor from his homeland, a long lost brother who told him stories of Jerusalem that filled Nehemiah's eyes with tears. The walls of our great city Jerusalem are crumbling. Its gates have been burned to the ground and all the buildings, that's a bit of a sneaky one isn't it, the buildings are in ruins, Nehemiah's brother said. Nehemiah's heart was broken as the walls, but he did the very best thing that he could do. He wept and he prayed and he poured his heart out to God who built the world and asked God to once again help his people. Next day, Nehemiah was doing his job. He took wine to the king who noticed his tear-stained face and sad eyes and asked him what was wrong. I want to go home, Nehemiah replied, and rebuild Jerusalem, which lies in ruins. If you are willing, O king, please let me go. I will also need wood to build with, so please send this too. Then Nehemiah took the long journey home to Jerusalem, surrounded by the king's soldiers to keep him safe. That night he went out to the walls to see what needed to be done and to plan the great rebuild. He knew that God, the great master builder, would be with him and help him to know what to do. Everyone who was left in Jerusalem helped to build the gates and the walls to keep the people safe. It was an enormous job. Now Nehemiah knew that he wasn't just building the city. He was building a community again. So when he saw that some of the people were hungry, he fed them. When people were being unfair, he challenged them and reminded them of what's important to God who built the world. Now they were ready for some of the people to return from Babylon to help rebuild the rest of the city. Houses, shops, businesses, farms, and to rebuild the great temple. They brought with them everything they could to help with the work and rebuild their communities. Gold, silver, cattle, and building materials. The rebuilding of Jerusalem continued for seven months until, until people had homes to live in and families were settled. But God, the master builder, had more work to do. He knew that his people needed more than buildings and homes. They needed to remember who they were, to rebuild their hearts. And you'll hear how later on in our assemblies. Like the people in the story, 
We are getting our school and our hearts ready for when we are all back together again. But a few things about the story that might make you think a bit. I don't want you to answer out loud, but just to think in your head what you thought about in the story. First of all, I wonder, why did Nehemiah feel so sad when he heard the news from his brother? How do you think he felt when he was given the job of rebuilding Jerusalem? Or how did it feel to return home? I wonder what the most difficult part of the rebuilding was for him. How might you rebuild a community or someone's heart? I wonder how this story might help us today. We'll probably reflect on these sort of questions for the next few weeks. We've been thinking today about the story of Nehemiah's rebuild. How he chose to hear God's voice and be courageous as he returned to Jerusalem. He probably learnt new skills and as he realised how big the job of rebuilding was going to be. Nehemiah experienced many different emotions and I'm sure we're feeling lots of different things ourselves at the moment. Rebuilding our school community is going to take time like rebuilding Jerusalem. I'm going to say a prayer now. If you want to make this prayer your own, please join in with the Amen at the end. Dear God, thank you so much for our school community, that we fit together like a jigsaw, that we all matter and that each of us is important. Help us to help each other fit in by showing our school value of grace. Amen. We're going to end our time of collective worship today with a blessing for all of us in our school community, adults and children. Now I really like this blessing because it reminds us of four of our school values and it has actions which help me to remember the words. Perhaps after assembly you might like to think in your classes if you can remember the other two school values that aren't mentioned here. And if you know the words and actions, please feel free to join in where you are. May you find peace, may you find hope, may you find joy this day, may you find love, may you find rest here in this place together. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen.